What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video audio stuff, and for you today, I've got my tutorial and review of Motion VFX M Transition Scrub, which is a pack of retiming transitions for Final Cut Pro. They're pretty unique, so let's take a look at them and I'll show you what they're all about. As ever, links to this software plus any other relevant videos I'll pop in the description box below. And of course, this isn't sponsored content, so if you do enjoy this, please let me know by leaving me a thumbs up. So what is M Transition Scrub? M Transition Scrub is a pack of 30 4K ready transitions for Final Cut, which mess with the timing and kind of simulate that scrubbing between clips. On paper, it sounds like something you might want to avoid, but I tell you, the very first time I dropped this onto my footage, I was amazed by how polished yet gritty it looked. Let me show you what I mean. So here we are in Final Cut, and you can see these are the 30 presets that you get. I'm looking at this sequence at the moment, which is just a, a bundle of clips that I took from a music video. I've just got hard cuts in between the clips, so let's make it more interesting by adding some transitions. These scrub transitions, I think, are going to work really well with this video because you've got a lot of graffiti. It's quite a gritty looking video. So all I'm going to do is drag a transition in between these first two clips. Straight away, you can see this needs adjusting as it's too long for the two clips. Obviously, it's ridiculously easy to adjust the duration of these transitions with Final Cut. You just simply drag the transition from the side and it becomes shorter. The nice thing about this is you won't lose any of the effect of the transition, it just speeds it up. So it couldn't be easier. Taking a look at them now, this is the first clip without a transition. And then if I add the scrub transition, it just looks so cool with so little effort. As I mentioned, you get 30 presets in the pack, which is more than enough. And you also get a custom profile, which you can set up to get the exact look you're looking for from the ground up. Each preset shows a variation in retiming, scrubbing style, color palette, and lots of other layers doing interesting things. To demo the various styles available, I've put together a short clip of a music video, the first version of which you'll see just with hard cuts, and the second one I've added a load of different M Transition scrubs to show you what they can do. I absolutely love the way these transitions manipulate the timing of the two clips but keep the audio track constant. Of course, this was a music video, so it was a multicam clip with the audio coming from just one source. But if you use them on two clips that have their own audio sources, M transitions will actually crossfade the audio automatically whilst maintaining the same timing. But how do you use M Transition Scrub? The trick to getting the most out of these transitions is to get in the menu and start using those sliders. You can get some completely amazing looking results. So for this example, I've got some B-roll clips of a camera shooting a lens on a slider. For simplicity, I'm gonna add just the very first scrub transition onto our timeline. And just for your reference, this is what it looks like with nothing changed, just the default settings. It looks really cool, you don't need to change it, but this is a really, really tweakable plugin. So a good thing to do is position the playhead right in the middle of the transition. That way, any changes we make will be able to see it because it's right in the middle of the action. Diving into the menu now, and you can see the first option is you can turn off or on whether your transition is going to scrub into each clip. Personally, I'm leaving these on because if I'm using this plugin, I always want it to scrub into the clips. Next, we have a control called Overdrive, and this seems to make the highlights bloom, and it also adds that kind of shaky effect. This is gonna make a massive difference to the look of your transition. Of course, you can affect the intensity and size of the shakiness, but the control that will make the biggest difference for you is the Overdrive color, which quickly can make things look quite psychedelic. Kinda cool though. 
Next, we have Film Burn, and that dramatically affects the color in your transition. Of course, it's infinitely tweakable, but the main thing that will make the difference here is the hue that you choose and also the saturation. A real game changer with these parameters is the Film Burn Blending. And of course, with this, you get the same options as you do in the compositing menu in Final Cut. The default is soft light, but of course, if you change it to something else, it's going to drastically change the look of your transition. Next, we have Lens Dirt, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You can change it from dark to light, just depends on the look you want. Of course, you can change its intensity and you can change its location by flipping it. Desaturation is very self-explanatory and of course, with this preset, it's switched on. And I like that you can dial in the exact strength you want. For this preset, colorization is switched off. If you turn it on, some crazy things start to happen. And of course, they get even more crazy if you start just changing the colors. My advice is tread carefully on this one because things get quite extreme quite quickly. The last parameter is so cool. It's called Prism and it gives your colors that kind of RGB split when light passes through a prism. I love this one and often if I use one of the presets I might go into the menu and actually this is the one that I'll switch on because it just looks really awesome. Right now to show you four examples the first one is the first transition with all the default settings and then I've got three others where I've messed around with them to get three really different looks. Check it out. Here's transition one with all the default settings. Next I've made some tweaks to the colouring and film burn blending. Next, I've maxed out the shaking effect and my favourite, the prism look. Lastly, I wanted vintage and gritty looking. I can see these transitions being really useful for marketing videos, particularly for tech companies, short films, fitness and tech YouTube channels, vloggers are going to love them. And of course, the application I'm most looking forward to using them for in the future is music videos. In fact, I kind of wish I'd had these a few years ago because I feel like they would have elevated my music videos to the next level. So in my opinion, I love M Transition Scrub, but I was kind of expecting to, it's kind of obvious. You know, I was scrolling through Motion VFX library of plugins looking specifically for some cool new transitions when I found these. I checked out their demo video and was impressed. I thought, bugger it, I'm gonna buy them. And again, I was impressed, but to the point where I thought, you know what, you guys would probably really enjoy seeing this featured in a video. So hence, you know. A big reason why I love these is the ease of use. I mean, if you're a skilled video editor, you may be able to approximate a similar look using uh, some, you'd have to mess around with the timing. You'd be doing lots of keyframing and adding layers and all sorts. You may be able to get close, but it would take a lot of work to get as slick a look as you get with these transitions. At the end of the day, time is money, and if these transitions help me deliver better looking product in less time, then I'm a happy customer. I'm not saying it's a perfect product, I mean, does that exist? But there are a couple of things you should know before trying it yourself. It's a fairly minor criticism, but you've got 30 presets, which all look great by the way, but no way to distinguish what you're going to get when you actually drag it onto your timeline. Yes, you get a thumbnail for each. Yes, you can roll your mouse over them to get a preview. But due to the unpredictable nature of the retiming, you won't really know what you're getting until you actually drag it onto your footage. It would have been good if each preset was named in some way to reflect the style, much in the same way as lookup table companies do. Not easy, I know, but possible. The last thing to mention is that these transitions require fairly heavy duty processing power. My iMac is no slouch and it still takes quite a lot of time to render once you drop it onto your footage. A couple of things you can do to combat this, of course, you can switch your viewing mode to performance rather than quality and it should run much faster. Or of course you can switch your background rendering on, which eh, I, I kind of, I wouldn't. I'd just stick with the first option and, and switch on your performance viewing mode. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. And of course, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this top one for you. And the video below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.